Hey guys, I'm here today to talk to you about how I teach paper loom weaving with my sometimes kindergartners when I'm feeling really wild and crazy, and most of the time my first grade kids. It's one of my favorite things to teach, but it didn't used to always be that way because teaching weaving to kids, especially first grade kids, can be a bit of a challenge. So the whole point is to be extremely patient. It's going to need to require a lot of patience from you and from the kids and to make it as fun as you possibly can. Which paper loom weaving doesn't sound like a good time, but trust me, you can make it an awesome thing to teach. So when I'm teaching first graders weaving, one of the first things I do to introduce weaving to them is read one of my favorite books about weaving, which is The Goat in the Rug. It's a book all about the process of a Navajo weaver starting from the fiber or the mohair of the goat and changing that or weaving that into a rug. And it's told by the perspective of Geraldine, who is the goat. And it's a really great story. Some of my favorite parts of the story is how she talks about, or how the goat talks about, where the mohair or the wool comes from. And so usually at this point in the story, I'll pause and I'll share some actual wool with the kids. This is um, wool from an alpaca. And so I have little tiny bundles for each one of them to hold. And they'll usually just hold that during the rest of the story, as long as we don't get too crazy with it. It's kind of hard to get crazy with a piece of wool though. So it's kind of fun for them to see that and really get their hands into the texture of the wool. Another part of the book then talks about how Geraldine, I'm sorry, not Geraldine, the Navajo weaver will change that uh, wool into yarn. So it talks about the process of spinning and at which point I'll show them this wool yarn that's been spun and then she dyes the wool and so at that point I'll usually show them this. At the end of the book she's got a beautiful woven rug and I managed to find a lot of these pieces, I got real lucky, at Goodwill. So these pieces are all examples of weavings and I have enough where we kind of pass them around and look at them. That usually takes a good 15 minutes, and it's at that point that we usually pause and we go shopping. So if you're not familiar with how I kind of do things in my art room, I have a whole process of going shopping at the art store. So the kids will walk over to the art store and get a piece of paper that they're going to use to create their loom, unless we've already painted that paper, which is the case that I'm about to show you. And we also get a pair of scissors from the store, and then we gather back again on the floor. Now. Before we start the process of creating a loom, I have a couple of big paper looms that I'll show the kids. Unfortunately, I left it at school. But this is a great example that I found of a placemat that's been woven, and it shows um, the over-under technique. And I just like to show that to the kids so they kind of see a really big version of the look that we're going for. So, to create our weavings. Now, I mentioned that the kids are all sitting on the floor with a piece of paper and a pair of scissors in front of them, which I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, they've got scissors on the floor. Are you crazy? Yes. However, I have established a firm rule. These scissors and the paper are supposed to be on the floor in front of you. Your hands are to be in your lap. If you're touching your paper or your scissors and your hands aren't where they're supposed to be, well, then I get to take the goods. So keep it under control. And usually we do Sometimes we forget, in which case I confiscate the scissors or the paper. It's not a big deal. I'll give it back to them in a moment. I just want their full attention. And for that process of making the paper loom, I really need it. So it's at this point that I establish a ground rule. When my scissors are in my hand working, your scissors are to be on the floor. At the moment my scissors are in my lap taking a nap, that's your special signal that you can pick up your scissors and do the same. As soon as you're done, you do exactly the same thing and that's your signal to me. Because if it's one thing I can't stand, and I know you are the same, it's the, like this, like this, did I do it right, like this, over and over and over again. I don't even answer it because you're supposed to do this if you want me to take a look, see at what you're doing, and then I usually give them that. All right, paper weaving. So the first step that I show the kids is to take your paper and make sure it's vertical like a tall building and fold it in half. To me, it doesn't matter which way they fold it, either with the colorful side or the um, white side on the back. Once it's been folded in half, and I'll do this on my lap, then I tell the kids that they need to make it so that the folded part is at the bottom and the open part is at the top. 
and I'll wait for them to rotate their papers. And once they've done that, I'll have them watch me. You're only peeling back one of the papers and you're going to fold it down about the same height as your finger. It does not need to be perfectly straight and it does not have to be exactly like mine. And I'll fold it once I'm done folding it. And I actually have mine on an easel that it, so they can all see it. Then they fold it. Then our next step, we do it together. Unfold that piece of paper and I tell them this. I do a lot of call and response in my room. So whenever I give the kids this signal, <clears throat> that means they are to clear their throat and they're gonna repeat after me. So I'll usually go, <clears throat> fingers here, my finger, and they'll say my finger, is going back and forth on the stop line. This is the stop line. When my scissors are a cutting, they will stop on this line. And it's at that point, I tell them to put their hands back in their lap and watch. So I ask them, where's the middle bottom of the paper? Is it here? And I usually get a no, here, no, yes. And then I'll say, okay, I'm gonna start cutting and I want you to tell me when to stop. Oops, didn't quite make it to the middle, that's okay. And so they'll usually tell me to stop and I will say, oh look, I've almost cut my paper in half. I'll put my scissors down and they do the same. Once they're done cutting, we talk a lot about math. We do a whole, this is almost cut in half. Can somebody spell the word half for me? I'll write it on the board. Can somebody tell me what half would look like if you're doing it in a number form? That takes a little bit of work because some of them haven't been introduced to the fraction of half yet. And then also I will um, ask them if you were at Toys R Us and all the toys were half off, what might that percentage look like? Some of them know that right off the bat, and then others, it takes a little bit of work. So after that short little quick math lesson, I ask them, which is another great thing about this lesson, is you can ask a lot of questions. I ask them, okay, I now need to cut this paper into four equal sections. I just cut it into two. I wanna cut it into four. And a lot of the kids will say, well, then you should cut it this way. And at which point I say, but I don't want any pieces to fall off, so they have to think a little bit more and then they tell me to cut from here and here. So again, I demonstrate, and they usually say, stop. Okay, my scissors are down, it's their turn. And once I see them have their scissors down, uh, we'll go over how to write the word one, how to write the word fourth, how to write it in number form, and a percentage of that. Next thing is my question of, now I want it into eight equal sections. And for some reason, they're always like, ooh. It's a crack up. So finally somebody will say, cut from the bottom. I demonstrate that and then I let them have at it. Now the thing is this, a lot of the kids will accidentally take that small strip and cut it in half. And I will demonstrate getting ready to do that in which case they'll all say, don't do it, that's not what you're supposed to do, which is great. But inevitably some kid is going to do it. Or some kid's gonna do this, which is why I always demonstrate doing the wrong thing a whole bunch of times so that the kids all say, oh, don't do it, so that other kids are aware, oh, that's what I'm not supposed to do. So you're going to maybe end up with a couple of kids who have, instead of eight sections, nine or 10, it's okay. They're just gonna have a little bit more weaving to do. Once that's finished, it's their turn. And that usually takes me 30 minutes. We'll open the loom so they can see this is now what your loom will look like. This is what you will be weaving with. These are your warps. You're going to be weaving with wefts and that usually ends a 30 minute class. And so I'll pause right there.